Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and what you're about to see is a 45-minute interview with the developers behind Star Tycoon. Uh, their names are Peter and Alkira. Um, they are going to be launching Star Tycoon on February 28th, 2023 on Kickstarter. So if you like what you see here, uh, definitely check out the links in the below description. Um, the interview will go over how the game is played, the ins and outs, um, typically what a player would do on their turn and some other cool things about the Kickstarter project. So definitely tune in if this kind of game has any interest to you. I will be having a written preview launching around the Kickstarter date. Um, this video and an unboxing video will be going live shortly, so be on the lookout for the unboxing video, um, which will go over the physical components. But what you're about to see here is an interview on Tabletop Simulator. Um, again, I have to mention that uh, prototypes and um, pre-early access uh, Tabletop Simulator stuff, That's this is all like under development and subject to change and all that jazz. So what you're looking at isn't going to be the final look of everything, but for the most part, it's it's pretty well put together already. Uh, you'll find more about that in the interview. All right, so with that being said, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. On with the show. Uh, it is the most updated version. Yeah, awesome. it's like quite coincidental, actually. Uh, my um, tabletop simulator guy just finished it a few days before. So oh, that's was, cool. Um, Perfect timing. <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping to get a little bit more content added in the Kickstarter. So it should be like a few more cards and events um, mm -hmm. after all that. But yeah, this is this is most up to date version. That's cool. So there's um, going to be stretch goals then. That that's cool. Yeah, stretch goals. We, we've tried to have most of um, like the actual gameplay affecting content already in like the mm -hmm. initial base part of the game. But there's just a um, yeah, just a couple couple more things I wanted to add in. So that's awesome. If we get that. I'll say the prototype that you sent is fantastic. If if the final version is anything like that, then I think you're in good shape. So. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. Really happy to hear. Yeah, we, we tried our best to um, – we, we actually got the manufacturing company themselves to make the sample instead of me cobbling it together with um, yeah. parts off eBay. Duct tape and, and, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, duct tape. <laughs> I've, I've seen all sorts of varieties of different prototypes, and yours is one of the, the better ones for sure. So congrats Oh, that's on that. good. Oh, thank you very that's much. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it smells oh, like fantastic. The little, <laughs> the little plastic tray and stuff. That I, I really wanted that in, in the prototype because that's a big part of it. So, um, yeah. Happy Th to that's that. one of the things I wrote up in my, my – I'm writing the preview now, and I did the unboxing video just like 10 minutes ago. And I love the fact mm -hmm. that the box insert doubles as the, the game tray for all the different pieces. Ah, cool. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Happy you appreciate that. It's a, it's a cool bit. So. Makes it a lot easier when you're moving it, moving it around with each player. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Agreed. So, all right. Um, are you guys okay? Like, are you, is there anything else you guys need or um, before we get started? Um, a uh, cup of tea would be nice. Okay, cup of tea. I'll, I'll ship that <laughs> somehow. The Adore Dash. Uh, it'll be there in about a week. <laughs> I, think, I, think we do, I think we have Door Dash. So yeah, that, that would be <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're all good to start whenever you Yeah, are. we're good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, Star Tycoon, from my understanding, uh, you've got some Tableau building going on. You've got a galactic market of sorts. So you've got a couple different mechanics all coming together. Um, I did read the PDF rulebook because I think the note in the box said that the current rulebook was outdated. Um, was there any major changes between the rulebook I received and the PDF version? Or was it just... Um, not, not really in terms of... The actual rules themselves okay. is mostly just laying it out a bit, uh, a bit more coherently and, gotcha. and so forth, and yeah. okay, clarity and stuff. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So, what exactly? I guess you're the experts. So, what is Star Tycoon, and um, what are you going to be doing in this game? Ooh, I like that. We're the experts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we hope so, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Star Tycoon is a one to six player engine building game with a science fiction theme. So you take on the role of a CEO of an interstellar startup company. And the aim of the game is to become the most prestigious company uh, in the galaxy at the end of the game. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned some um, engine building. I, I vaguely recall uh, planet or you players will be able to put down planets in front of them as sort of like an engine building. And then you can add developments to those planets to help you produce resources every turn. I kind of like that idea. 
Um, yep. Is that the general flow of the game is use the resources that you're getting to buy these planets and developments? Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Uh, here I'm... you take it from there. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically it. So um, as you as you buy more planets and develop them, um, you'll get more resources, which means that you can keep on building your empire. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, basically, uh, the goal of the game is to basically have the company with the most points, so be the most so influential it's company. <laughs> okay, it's it's pretty standard engine building stuff, but the the real uh, key of the game, or the unique part of the game, if uh, if you zoom in on, on the Galactic Exchange, this is really um, what the game revolves around. Uh, it's the game's unique me mechanics. So this galactic marketplace is where you would go to buy and sell your resources. And every single time you buy something or you sell something, uh, it affects the price of that resource for the very next player. So um, basically each transaction you make having a flow and effect to the next person for the rest of the game who uses the exchange. Okay, makes sense. Um, I, I love games like that. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Stockpile, but there's an uh, ever-changing market with the different companies in that game. And I love the fact that your decisions in a game like this will affect prices, um, making some commodities better than others and that kind of thing. Um, I'm yeah, assuming that one of the... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, yeah, it, uh, I have definitely heard of Stockpile because as I was, as we were developing this game, we researched and looked up every, as many games as we could with this market mechanic, uh, mm -hmm. like every game that has a, a market mechanic. And we tried really hard to set out to make a game that has the simplest to understand uh, like supply and demand mechanic of, of any game. So uh, if anyone wants to hold me to that, feel free to. And if you find something that's simpler, just uh, send me an angry email with the correction in it. Uh, but we, we do believe that this is the simplest version of market mechanic in a game. Cool. So if I'm reading this right, if this, this yellow marker here was on this space, you could spend one energy credit for three of the blue resources. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, also, how right. you do that arrow? That's really cool. I didn't know you could do that arrow. <laughs> yeah, if you hit tab, that that pings whatever you're you're doing. Yeah. Oh, like wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like show now. And, um, that's <laughs> that's <awesome. laughs> I've been in this this. I've played tabletop for over two hundred hours. I didn't know I had that. <laughs> <laughs> and and bonus tip: if you hold in left alt over a card, you'll zoom in on it, and you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's, actually, yeah. I knew about the old thing. I didn't know about the zooming in and out thing. Oh, this is this is fantastic. yeah. It's yeah. Really awesome. <laughs> that is yeah. That that was a huge game changer for me. Once I learned that, it it saved me from having to reposition the camera every five seconds. So, yeah, it's awesome. painful that's otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what you said before about the um the marker being in that spot, that's exactly how it works. Okay. So um throughout the game, this will just fluctuate wildly. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on your starting cards, uh, depending on what each player starts with, will kind of, um, you don't sort of really notice it, but it sort of influences the underlying market conditions throughout the rest of the game as well. Okay. Yeah, from my understanding, players start the game with uh, a company, and I think it was a starting planet of some kind, and yep. you get various bonuses based on what you get. Yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. Okay. Um, if I hit set up here, is that going to mess anything up, or...? No, nope, that'll set up the game. So yeah, go for it. Okay, I uh, just want that way you can show off more stuff. Okay. Yeah, sure thing. So in, um, you would have gotten in your hand. Yeah, I'll go ahead and three cards. Yeah. Oh, that's not me. I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know where you're zooming in on, but um. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll just move them Thank all you. over here. There you go. Okay. Oh, I see that. Okay. So I'm looking at my Verth planet here in the Magna system. And on the very yep. bottom, I see some symbols like the blue and the red icons and a little factory. If I if I read the rules right, you produce those resources every turn. So that's kind of like your engine building mechanic. That's correct. Yep. Okay, cool. And the uh, the company to the right, the advanced phase mechanics, is that... Is that part of the company that you start with, or uh, what yes, exactly? that, that is the that is the company that you're representing this game. That's that's basically like your character, I suppose. Okay. And uh, on on that particular card, you've got a unique ability. So every company's got their own special rule bending ability. Um, at the very bottom, they've got a set of planets that they wish to claim as well. So everyone's got a different set of planets that they want that'll give you points. And on the top right hand corner, you've got your starting capital as well. Okay. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, so starting capital, you mean you get those tokens from the supply at the beginning of the game to, to that yep. way you've got some spending stuff. Okay. Yep, yep that's, that's it. Right. Okay, cool. And so you mentioned that players are encouraged to get the, uh, like, it looks like I've got three Saturn cards down here at the very bottom of my company. That means that the I, I need to be on the lookout for plan, or for planets that have that symbol on it? Uh, yeah, so so close on on there. You've got the name. Uh, so they're color coded. So that one's from the Glint system. So Glint being the star, and uh, everything in the Glint system is what you need to get. Hopefully, three of them. Um, you're actually quite fortunate at the moment in the planet <laughs> row at the oh. top here. You've actually oh. got two of them. Oh, sorry. Oh, ah, okay. Not the I green see. one, but two gray ones. Ignore that oh, one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. So it's it's color coded then to match is is what yeah, I yeah color coded to match. Oh, oh, I see, and it says glint system right here. Okay, I I, I understand. Yep. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. So um, the idea is that it mm-hmm. gives you a bit of direction at the start of the game because otherwise it might seem a bit overwhelming. So that way you kind of have something to initially go for to start um, working gotcha. towards points. Which is good, yeah. Gotcha. And it looks like um, the cost of the cards themselves are in the upper left hand corner. Yeah. The okay. cost of every yep. every card in the game is on the top left. Okay, cool. And just in looking at these cards more, um, I think I read that the hammer symbols that we see here, um, that's how many development cards that you can slot to that planet to help you generate mm-hmm. more resources. That's yep. correct. So that's every right. planet's got a different uh, development capacity. Most of them have three, but some of them have got two or some of them have got one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, some, some will have more capacity than others. Awesome. And... I, I, I apologize if I'm, like, taking over here. I'm just trying to... No, 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 you're fine. You're <laughs> great. <laughs> I see that there's some symbols on the bottom of these planets as well. Uh, again, based on what I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if you slot the developments of those icons underneath that planet, then you get the four points, for example. Yes, um, spot on. Perfect. Okay, cool. Okay, so it's kind of like your starting planet. Your, your starting planet, or your... What was it? The starting company, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. wants a certain t- uh, certain types of planets, whereas these planets want certain kinds of developments. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's it. Okay, and that's the main way to get points in the game is to uh, it's basically basically set collection for those particular planets. Gotcha. Now I'm looking just at the columns themselves. It looks like the blue deck is just for the planets, um, mm-hmm. and then you have red. Looks like possibly a grayish color and gold. Um, I, 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 this kind of reminds me a little bit of Splendor in that there's different difficulties of cards mm-hmm. that you can purchase. Is that how this is working here? Yeah, it's pretty much exactly like Splendor. I would yeah. say we've almost ripped off Splendor to the T. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I won't Thank say anything goodness. if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I, when we when we design uh, our sort of design process when we made when we make games is we love playing a particular type of game but we either want more of it or we want different of it and and so that's where we sort of um, that that's sort of where we started we love sci-fi but we couldn't find an engine building game that was similar to Splendor or other ones like that that was was basically something like this so that's how we set out to make it so that's awesome um, okay. and we also we like Splendor as well but after you know half a dozen games you kind of you want a bit more out of it because it's yes um like we like casual games yeah. but we just yeah we want a bit more meat and so mm-hmm. i would call this splendor but with much more meat <laughs> okay that's perfect i i splendor is one of my go-to gateway games to teach people um but there's only two strategies in splendor it's rush victory points or build uh, just out the wazoo and get something free every turn and yeah, it's it's yeah. having more meat, like you said. I think uh, would appease a lot of the more hardcore gamers out there. So that's cool. Yep. Um, and I noticed that there's some there's six of these cards. Of, I always forget their name. Uh, partnerships is that right? That's correct. Yeah, research partnerships. Okay, so cool. rather than purchasing, say, a planet or a development, it looks like players can also purchase one of these partnerships. And that makes all future developments of that color free, and you also get a stipend if someone buys a development of that color that you have. Is that yeah? That's correct. Okay. Um, is there a yep. limit to how many of these partnerships you can have? Uh, no, you can have many as you can afford. As, yeah, as many as you can that's, afford. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. Okay, that's neat. Um, so there, there is an interesting dynamic in the game where, like, you you. 
do you have to be aware of what other players are purchasing or building up um, mm-hmm. if you sort of want to like cut them off a little bit? So uh, research partnerships are very valuable. And if you find someone else is going for research partnerships, then you might also want to, um, you know, try doing the same. But if everyone goes for research partnerships, then they'll be much harder to get because the value of research will skyrocket and be more expensive for everyone. I never thought um, about that. Yeah, because the more you the more you buy of something, or I get no, the more you buy, it goes up, and if you sell it, it yeah. goes down. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. So oh. it, the, the, there's it then adds a, another little element of it that if if everyone like if two people are going for research and they get really really expensive, like it goes all the way up to here, mm-hmm. then someone else in the game who was not going for research and doesn't really care about it, they can sell theirs to make a lot more money. So if you have a look at the top column here, oh. research, if it's if it's worth four energy credits, well, mm. that's going to be very valuable if you don't care about research, which means you can then use that currency to then go buy a lot of other resources. That's cool. Mm, okay. can... I never thought about it that way. Uh, I can see the strategies now opening up. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> Economics, Vince. I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, we accidentally learned a lot about the economy while making. It. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally, I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry about that. Holy cow! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Supply and demand. I, I that takes me back to my college days, and uh, let's just say I did not enjoy that at all. Ugh. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I don't want to keep taking over here. So I guess. What would a typical person do on their turn? I, from my understanding, there are six rounds in the game, and after six rounds, whoever's the most points wins. Um, but what would t- what would you typically have available to you on your turn to do? Sure, I'll. Um, well, well, I guess we'll run through just how how a game plays. Um, I okay. think we've already explained most of the elements on the game um we probably haven't explained up here just these are all the resources i guess that's probably self-explanatory okay um you, the, the yellow ones that's your energy credits that's like the central currency of the game okay uh and then in order we've got minerals gas food uh research um ships these happy little fellows over here on the very right with the skulls these are illegal goods oh. um what kind of illegal goods they are that's up to your imagination <laughs> um <laughs> Part of the war. Like yeah, skulls. right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, and on the left here, we've got a couple of other cards. So the top one is bank loan. So if you get stuck for credits during the game, you can take out a bank loan. Mm-hmm. Um, bank loans are great, but if you zoom in on it, you'll notice that um, it actually comes with minus five points and minus one energy credit. So you're expected to pay interest every turn if you have a loan. Um, and if you're, if you don't pay your loan back by the end of the game, it is worth minus five points to you, which could be, um, Oof. very painful. Wow. Spicy. <laughs> Spicy, yep. Yeah. Um, and then below that, you've got event cards, uh, very simply at the end of every round, there's an event that occurs and, uh, it either changes up the rules or gives people free stuff or, or whatever, um, that you can oh, okay. have a read of that one then. So you said that, uh, some of them are good, some of them are bad? Uh, most of them are fairly positive. Um, none of them are like sort of really negative or, or sort of harm you in some way, but they do sort of change it up. So, um, if you're, uh, a little bit behind, it might help you out. Um, this is probably an example of one that might, might stuff you up. If you are collecting illegal goods, um, then you have to sell all these back to the bank. You do get money in return from, from it. Mm-hmm. So it can be really good if you're stuck with illegal goods and you don't really want them, then you can just get rid of them. Uh, but yeah, there's an example of, of okay. the events. So regarding these illegal goods, how do players get illegal goods? And are they good for anything or are they just there to clog up your, your hand? They're very much a risk, sort of like a risky investment, risky risk reward kind of, kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll see if I can find... An example of one. Let me just. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's one. Oh, you found one, legend. Nice. Okay. <laughs> thank you to my thank you to my lovely assistant. Ooh. Um, okay. <laughs> so, if you have a look at this card, you'll notice that um, it's on the top left corner. It only costs one gas, so it's very very cheap compared to say uh this refinery here in the middle which costs two two resources okay so it's it's very cheap to buy but it gives you minus one point 
and it has the byproduct of illegal goods. So I guess sort of if you want to talk about the theming or the law of it is that you've kind of cut corners in building this particular development mm. and uh, it's um, it is giving a you shady that business. Ah, okay. a shady business. Uh, <laughs> you could call it corruption. You could call it ignoring building codes, whatever you want, really. It could be as bad as you want. Um, so the illegal goods themselves... They, what, what they you're you're right they essentially just clog up your hand so at the end of every turn if you have a look at this turn order card right here yep. um at the end of every turn at the bottom it says you have to discard down to seven resources and credits but your illegal goods cannot be discarded so uh, um, okay is there another they, way to get rid of these these illegal goods aside from an event from that event deck yes there are so, a couple uh, of ways yeah uh, okay well, actually here's here's a good example right here okay um, I can get... Oh, I see. Is. So you can pay either a blue and a yellow food or whatever that is, or a, an illegal good. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's it. So Sorry. there's not many cards in the game that let you purchase with illegal goods, but the ones that do are very, very cheap and they don't give you any sort of minus benefits. So it's sort of like the... You can get a very good short-term gain from it if you play them right of the right cards show up. But if the right cards don't show up, then you are kind of stuck with them. Um, if you do get stuck with a lot, though, you can eventually buy one of these cards at the bottom here. This uh, You've got a Crime Hub, which you can buy with illegal goods. Ooh, oh, um, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, ri a risk, risky uh, investment kind of a, a deal with those ones. That is living that is on a the edge. Nasty card, <laughs> holy cow! It's a Han Solo moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a job of the hut kind of thing, but okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. I know my Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, sure you do. <laughs> uh, so I'll, if you want to, we can run through a quick turn. Yeah, um, please. That'd be great. Actually, the. I'll I'll do it with your cards over here. Okay. So uh, at the start of your uh, so at the beginning of the game, you'll you'll grab your starting resources. So we'll just um, grab that. Got one gas. Got two research and two ships. So you go. Awesome. This is what you start out with. Um, and then during the during your turn, you can purchase one card if you want from each row. So at the beginning, let's just say you'll be spending some. Uh, you'll You'll be spending a ship to buy one of these gray cards because that's what you want. There okay. You go. We'll just pop that there. Did you um, get the production from the home world? Uh, oh, yes, of course. Forgot my own rules. <laughs> so you also produce at the start of your turn as well. <laughs> it's all good. So, I would have forgotten to. <laughs> so you produce the, the resources based on any planet that you might have or uh, anything basically with its blue factory symbol on it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's correct. Anything in a blue box is what you get. Okay. Uh, and then you'll be using these to uh, purchase stuff. So if we want to say purchase this one here, okay. which um, costs uh, one mineral and one research, then we just pop that in there. Okay. Grab it. And then we can I'll just move these aside. It goes underneath the planet. And that's basically it. That could be what a typical turn looks like um, when uh, when playing the game. So the minus the exchange. Yeah, minus the exchange. So the exchange itself is is what you'll be going to a lot because most of the time you won't have the resources you need to actually buy mm -hmm. um, uh, buy what's there. So um, a really good example might actually be this one here, um, this communications array. So this costs one mineral or one food. At the moment, we don't have one food. We're, we're missing that. We do have the one mineral, which is good. Okay. So, so a typical turn, if you wanted to use the galactic exchange to get that one food that we need, We'll just drag our gas all the way up here. Okay. And let's have a look at the, the price of gas. So at the moment, everything is in the middle. Everything's one for one. So that okay. means you can exchange one gas for one energy credit. I see. So let's do that. Let's pop that into the bank. And that would move and then to because, the right because you bought it. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, set, we're actually selling gas at the moment. Oh, you're so selling we're gas. we're going to move the other right. way. Okay. Yep. So we'll take one energy credit from the bank. Cool. Uh, and we, we also flipped that over to say that we can't actually transact on it for the rest of the turn. Uh, uh, so you're limited to one row per turn. Okay. So yeah. You, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's actually sell multiple though, Like if you had, let's say if you had three green, would you be able to sell all three at three for three? 
and and then no, so it's it's just what it is at the top. So it's just ah, one for one. Okay, really so you can't. You, okay, yeah. it's not unlimited. Okay, so you have to follow yeah. that. Gotcha. Okay. Um. So now that we've got the money to do to actually make the purchase, we can pop that in the bank and we can move the food up one because we ah, bought it. Okay. The cool. And then take the food, and now we have enough to buy that card. So bring that over there and put that in the bank, and let's put that in there we go cool. with that can you move you the elements like. after you slot them or are they kind of stuck under that planet once you assign them they're stuck they're stuck okay just so, so i know that's yeah. cool okay yeah so you gotta gotta choose carefully where it goes yeah i see now because of the way these cards are iconed uh, if that's even a, a word um, we would need two purple and one illegal good, but we have a gray and a green here, which means that we'll never get the four points at game's end. Is that? That's correct. Okay. Just That's so correct. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Okay. The, uh, there are a couple of opportunities where you might be able to change things around. For example, there might be an event card that comes up that allows mm -hmm. you to, um, swap things around or some of the company abilities, um, provide oh, see, things like that as well. Exactly. Um, this company here, Frantic Hover Solutions, they allow you to rearrange ah, your uh, developments yeah, freely. Okay. okay. So that way you can you can play um, with that in mind and really make the most of each purchase, I suppose. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we can buy planets. We can buy developments and slot them under planets. You can buy a partnership, um, galactic exchange, bank loans. And I'm assuming these events come up whenever the round marker gets to, what is it, round uh, three, four, five, and six? Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Okay. On each of the exclamation marks. Cool. And this energy credits, is that like a game end bonus? Or? It, that's exactly what it is. Yep. So uh, depending on the criteria and the card, everyone can score that. And uh, that randomly changes from game to game just to sort of change things up a bit. Okay. So if you end the game with seven credits, you get six points. Is that... Yeah. My, okay. Cool. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So okay. you'd want to be hoarding, hoarding your energy credits. <laughs> for um, that one. So, oh, okay. So there's multiples actually. So I'm guessing there's a couple of them, and they're just ran it's a random selection. A random selection at the start of the game. Okay. So cool. cool. All right. Um, and um, mm -hmm. just back to the strategy on that one too. Like this one for energy credits. This sort of seems a bit like oh yeah you get some money at the end of the game and and you get points but if everyone remembers that it can change the dynamics of the market because to get energy credits if you don't have a building that makes energy credits then people are going to be selling things a lot more which means resources are going to be getting slowly cheaper and cheaper throughout the game okay um so it's it's elements like this that sort of affect how each game plays and some games' markets can be skewed one way or the other, depending on what tiles and cards have come up at the start. That makes sense. If everyone's going toward selling things to get energy credits, this this bonus, you could forego that and use the advantage of the cheap market to then buy cards that are... You just buy a bunch yep. of cards to get points that That's way. exactly right. Exactly. Yep. Got it. Cool. Okay. You didn't exactly. realize economics could be this exciting, did you? <laughs> well, you make it a lot more exciting than my professor <laughs> did. Holy cow. <laughs> There's no line graphs or anything like that that I have to memorize, so I think I'm happy. Um, okay. So it says here we can barter with other players, too. Um, is that like a Settlers of Catan thing where we can just say, hey, um, I offer you this and you can give me this? Um is there like a is our contracts binding or can you break them at any time uh, we and, haven't put in the rules that contracts are binding it's uh i, I guess you, you negotiate under good faith if okay. you expect your person to actually uh your, your partner to follow through on their deal but yeah it's basically like so you just trade things at will if you want to okay um and uh players are encouraged to take advantage of uh, other players if they're in desperate need of resources and credits. that's cool yeah there there's a yep. game called munchkin which you may or may not heard of and you can form alliances break them screw people over it's it's a mess um so i guess you can just be as friendly or as mean as you want to with regards to this yeah yeah exactly. there's, there's, there's no there's no formal uh formal alliance mechanics okay. in this <laughs> makes sense um you can you can also make deals with players to use for example if they have special trade buildings um, oh, actually, I remember that. So, yeah, yeah, I'll let you explain it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> oh, 
I might move that over there actually just to make it easier to see. Um, so, if, for example, if you had this trade building here, it lets you bypass the market to um, sell off your illegal goods for money whenever you want to. So that way you might want to really lean into illegal goods that game and, um, you know, buy as many as you can that produce it because that way you can really pay off on it and, and sell them at a price when no one else can. Um so if there was another player that desperately wanted to use that because maybe they've stocked up on illegal goods and can't get rid of them, you could make a deal with them to um, to let them use it on their turn, which uh, makes for some interesting conversations. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can I can see that. Like you get a cut of like it, there's a like a trade fee commission where exactly. You know, gotcha. You can be as uh, brutal or as kind as you want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does this let you use this ability multiple times or is it only one, like one coin for one illegal good and that's it? Or can you use an ability multiple times so as long as you've got the money or the resources? So everything, uh, pretty much everything in the game is once, once, one use per turn. So okay. one card per turn, one row per turn, one um, exchange on one row. Yeah, everything's gotcha. basically Unless you have ability time. or something that specifies otherwise, okay, basically. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, sometimes you can use things twice. Gotcha. I think, yeah, I think what was confusing me was I remember reading in the rule book that you can perform as many actions as you want in any order that you want, so as long as you have the resources to do so. But you still are limited by the card itself, and you can only do that action once. Yeah, that's right. And okay. there's that's sort of like a key part of the strategy as well. So if you have a look at the the development list, uh, these row of cards. So like once you've, you, you sort of have to really weigh up what you want to take from each row because mm -hmm. you still only have limited buying opportunities. It's it's not just like a free for all where you just sort of get everything you possibly can. And, and it's not possible for someone to just buy things up really quickly because everyone still has the same um, amount of cards that they can buy per turn. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, it really, really does matter what you, what you choose. Gotcha. Um, I was reading the rule book, and uh, there's auctions and reserving cards. From my understanding, you can only reserve one card. Is there a benefit? Like, it, it, or let me just rephrase. It doesn't seem like it costs anything to reserve, and it's not in, in Splendor. It actually costs your entire action to reserve a card, and you get a gold token. Um, in this game, I'm guessing you can just reserve a card, no problem. So as long as you've got a free slot. Um, is there a detriment to reserving a card or should you always have one in reserve? Like, ah, uh, very good question. So, um, I'll answer the first part of the question then I'll get Kira to answer the second part. If I just flip these over for the moment. So let's just say this is your turn and you've got a full set of cards that you can choose from. Uh, you know, you say you buy the planet, uh, you buy this to put on it and then maybe this, this second row, um, the, sorry, this third row. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you want this card here and you, you can't afford it. Uh, you can just take it and you can reserve it and there's no cost to it. Um, I guess you could probably say the downside or the detriment is that you can't then buy anything else from that row. So you are using up one of your purchasing, uh, a bit of your purchasing power to reserve it. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's no there's no sort of detriment or anything like that to, to getting it. Um, now, that's reserving during your turn, but um, doing an auction during someone else's turn. I'll let Alkira explain that one. Okay. Um, let's just say... Oh, actually, hang on. I'll just pretend like that was the turn that just happened. Okay. Now, if, that, if that's my turn, and it's currently... Uh, and Alkira is watching me, and she really wants one of these cards, um, I'll get you to take over. Yeah, so I could um, use some of my resources that I currently own mm -hmm. uh, to reserve a card. So that initiates the bid. Um, if any other player wants to kind of get on board and like bid for that card, they can. They just have to top whatever I put on there. So if I put one resource on there, they'd need to put two on, etc. Um, and basically, the player whose turn it is, if they decide that they want to buy that card, they get uh, basically to trump it. So they get first priority. So they can just take it as usual, and I would get my resource back. Okay. But if the player's uh, whose turn it is doesn't want it and no one else has bid on it or anything like that, then at the end of that turn, I'll be able to take that card, put it into my reserve, and then I spend the one resource um, for the privilege of bidding on it, basically. <laughs> and the losers yeah, so that may have put resources on turn. it, they don't lose anything? No, Sorry? they don't. No. So, so it's whoever, wins the, whoever um, wins the bid gets the card, and the resources return to everyone else if you gotcha. uh, participate yeah. okay. in it. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so that can, that can, that's a really big part of the game, actually. It's um, being able to, because we, we found when we were developing this game, and it's also the same in, in other, um, other engine building games that we've played, that sometimes the perfect card that you've been waiting for comes up during someone else's turn. So, right. and that, that can be really frustrating if you can't get to that card uh, at any point, but this allows you to pay attention, uh, pay attention during other people's turns to have an opportunity to grab the one that you want. So being able to reserve out of turn um, is a really good way to, um, uh, to, to get the things that you to get the cards that you want that you've been waiting for. Gotcha. And I'm yeah, assuming, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. Um, I was just going to say the other thing as well is that reserving cards is a great way to get ahead in mm -hmm. the game um because if you end up not wanting the card you can just trade it for another one in reserve not to reserve so you can swap it out basically um but it means that at any time during your turn you essentially have one extra card that you can build if you have one in reserve I see. um so it's like a bonus build basically which okay. can be very useful <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome okay and if you so you can swap so if you have something in your reserve and you don't want it anymore you does the the reserved card that you have go back to the three card row in place of the one that you just took or do you just discard it that's right it goes back it, in right. place of it okay so you yeah. just swap it okay cool yep yeah. okay um Okay, well that's awesome, and I'm guessing the auction can be be called out by anyone at any time. Uh, there's no like set phase where they have to, you know. No, anytime. Yeah, there's, there, okay. There's a, there's a small element of like waiting to see if anyone else wants the card because whoever whoever initiates the bid has to put their resources on it first, right? Um, and then the person who outbids you just has to put at least one more resource on it. So depending on the order of whoever calls it first, um, may end up paying more or less. Um, and there are some very fun situations where th there's a bit of bluffing involved where I've had this happen to me a couple of times where another player will just bid on it and then mm. I'll bid more because I have to outbid him and they've just bid it because they wanted to drive the price of it up and waste my <laughs> oh. money. So that does happen a couple of times. So yeah, there's, there's a little bit of that. Or you sneak the reserve in at the end, hoping that no one else will notice so that you can get away with it cheaply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does the auction at all affect the Galactic Exchange at all or no? No, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, I, I should mention, we, we mentioned discarding um, resources before. Discarding resources affects the Galactic Exchange. So if you have to dump um, a resource of a particular type, say, for example, ships, for every ship that you discard, it it devalues that by one space. Okay. So um, gotcha. that's so, also something. That if, so if you have 10 resources at the end of your turn and you have to get rid of three or whatever it is, um, you'd have to give back oh. tokens and then that'll affect the price. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you guys were explaining about auctions because I picked up this card in my hand and it said I can use uh, the skulls for auctions. And I'm like, let me just stay quiet and wait for them <laughs> to explain what that is. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm happy you brought that card too, because this is a really good example of um, one of the company abilities that it doesn't make a big change, but if you really lean into the ability, it can be uh, a big deal for you. Mm -hmm. So for everyone else, uh, having lots of illegal goods can be really useless, but for this particular character card, it can be very useful to you during the game because you can, you can use these on um, auctions. Whereas normally you're not allowed to bring illegal goods to, to auctions and they're not accepted as currency. So that could be, um, yeah, mm -hmm. very, very useful to you. If you uh, bid on an auction, do you have to match the resources? So like if I, for example, were to auction this, or I call an auction on this generator, do I have to put a green token on here or yellow energy credit to bid on it? Or can it be any resource that I have? It can be any resource yeah. credit. Okay. Cool. And if you win an auction, can you build it immediately, or it, does it always go into your reserve? Uh, it always goes into your reserve. Okay. So you're not. Yeah. So you're you're basically paying for the privilege of being able to grab it on someone else's turn. Uh, you still have to pay for it during your turn. But if you already have a, a card in reserve, then you'd be forced to swap out. Or do you? That's yeah, not, that's right. What's that? That's correct. Yeah, you'd be forced to swap out. Okay, so you only gotcha. have one in reserve. Okay, so you can. You, so if you have a card in reserve, you're not 
omitted from the bidding process. You can still participate no. in auctions. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. Um, well, sorry, I, I uh, sort of dragged this on. I just got really interested with the game and the rules. And uh... No, that's fine. <laughs> that is, it's great. <laughs> was, was there anything else that I missed uh, that we didn't talk about that you want to highlight or anything that you... Uh... Um, I'm trying to think I if there was anything else. I think that's pretty much that's it, pretty isn't much it? it. I, I think probably the, the main... Um, uh, going back to that... Um, what we mentioned before about there being underlying economics in the game, I think that's probably the strategy that is the most interesting part because, um, and i got to say, this happened accidentally as we were doing supply and demand mechanics, is that we realized that the strategy runs way deeper um, as the game progresses because of the way the market mechanics work. So if you're if you're a person who understands... Uh, I mean, not deeply, but if you sort of have a, a vague understanding of how supply and demand works mm -hmm. um, and how, you know, someone else is producing this one particular type of resource. So I would want to get a different one. So that way, you know, you can um, uh, have an advantage over them. Mm -hmm. um, then you're going to have a lot of fun with this. I have, um, uh, just going back to the bank loans, we haven't really spoken about this yet, but yeah. this might be one of the things where you're like, like, why would I do that? I had, I had, we, we taught this game to someone and the, they immediately said about the bank loan, well, that's stupid. Like, uh, yes, I can see I get a bank loan, but I'm also paying interest and it's worth minus five points. That just seems like a, an absolute waste to me. Um, I have an accountant friend who, when he plays this game at the beginning of every game, he always gets a bank loan without fail because mm. in his, in his accountant's mind, having that extra starting capital to invest in things far outweighs the um having to pay it back interest to the interest right yeah. mm. plus you might be able to get all that back by invest like if, if you notice the market trending to where things you can grab like if if things are starting to get really valuable mm. with a bank loan you could grab five money and then you know sell off resources you know to get a bunch of money back and then you could pay off that bank loan and make some in the process Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So it so the bank loan could be a possible investment strategy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that's, a bit of fun to play around with. Oh, this is this is I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, awesome. See, I'm the type of person that would probably do something like that, but end up failing so miserably, <laughs> <laughs> like being in debt really she, badly <laughs> she always says that she's always like i i don't know how to play this game i don't know i don't know what i'm doing and then she beats me by like 20 points or... i know <laughs> no i plead the fifth yeah uh -huh. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> I, I think we have the fifth in australia so we would be able to play that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know the numbers in australia i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh man so is your Kickstarter date still aimed for around February 28th or has it changed at all or? Um, no, no, it's exactly 28th. Um, so February 28th, if you're um, mm -hmm. in America and March the 1st, if you're in Australia, um, depending on what time you wake up. So yeah, that's, that's set in stone and going ahead and uh, very excited to, to, to bring this game to market and see if anyone else wants to play it as well. That's awesome. Do you have any idea what the tiers are going to be yet? Like, uh, like base game, and then is there going to be like any premium editions or anything involving? Oh like... yes. Mm -hmm. um, great question. So from our previous Kickstarters, uh, I don't know if you had a had a look through um, our, our past catalog, but the last couple of games we've made, we, we've focused on um, you know big, massive, miniature heavy games on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. um, and those were great. They did really well. People love them. Um, from my perspective though, I'm really happy those games got made, but they were expensive to make and expensive to sell. And I, mm -hmm. how Kira and I really wanted a cheaper game this time. We're like, no, we want a game that will get to as many people as possible and be something that you can, um, sort of get out on game night to some people. More who are affordable a price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more, more accessible price, I could say. Yeah. So I'm really happy to say we've actually, we're, we're able to offer this game at $34, uh, US which um, was sort of our target price for this kind of game. And then there isn't like, um, there's not like a premium edition, but there is this neoprene mat that you can get for an extra 15 bucks. So uh, that's that's the mat that you're seeing actually in tabletop. This, oh, um, that's awesome. The, 
Yeah, mm. there's a graphic behind it. It's oh, got cool. printed spaces on it. If you hold in the alt over the mat, you can actually see the spaces behind. That's really cool. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and in person is so nice to play. It just keeps everything like neatly there and it's organized. Um, it's, it's yeah, gorgeous. I'm all about that. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't handle the cards just strewn all over the table. It's just it's a mess. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. can't wait to play against Vince. <laughs> it's, really <laughs> it's probably, probably too turn. early. But do you have any like expansions <laughs> planned, or are you just focusing on the core game for right now? Oh, that's a, we've been discussing this so much. Um, as far as the expansion is concerned, like we've had all these other ideas that we've thrown out. Like we wanted to introduce a worker placement uh, part of it where you sort of hire employees and they work on your buildings. Mm. Uh, we had a, another idea where you basically hire goons or the mafia to do, I guess, mean <laughs> things to other players. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're still working through those. We don't know whether they'll get to the point where they will be in an expansion. It's kind of hard though. Cause like, I don't know if you, when you think of expansions for board games, you think of something that sort of adds quite a lot to the game. Whereas all these are sort of like little elements. So we're sort of, mm-hmm. we're working through them at the moment to see whether they're worth putting into a, um, a paid expansion or maybe just like something small or something Something small on the side. No, that's completely understandable. I mean, from a personal standpoint, I mean, in my head, having all these expansions are great, but that puts more work on the player to grasp all the rules and keep everything together. Yeah. And the older that yeah. I get, the harder that becomes. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. like Sagrada, like I'm, I'm in love with the core game Sagrada, but there's all these other expansions that I could be... Bu- I just, I prefer the base game sometimes because I, I know what I'm doing. I can pull it out and I'm done. Um, yeah. Having more things in theory is good and there's benefits, but there's also negatives. So I can, I completely understand either way that you go on this, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our last game, Mothership, was an expansion fest. Like it, it, it really lent itself to having lots of different expansions and modules and whatever. Um, but as being, being designers, we just wanted to try something different this time and just go, okay, what is the absolute best core experience we can provide out of the box for the smallest price? And I reckon we've nailed it this time. That's awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So anything else that you'd like to say about the game or anything that we missed that, uh, you'd want to talk um, about or not really out Did you have anything else you wanted to mention? I'm trying to think. I think that you're, comes you're, you're better well. the game than I am, so if there's any, any <laughs> yeah. shout-outs or anything else you want to mention. <laughs> no, this is good. I mean, I mean, I apologize. I know I, I promised a 15, 20-minute video. We're like 50 minutes now. So first, I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, go one-on-one with us. That's really that's really kind. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. Oh, no, we really like the opportunity. Yeah. And uh, for anyone else listening, just love to have you along to the and just just to come over and, and um, check out what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to have a few events during the campaign as well. Um, we had this for Mothership where you could sort of design parts of the game. Um, not not like you don't have to pay to mm. be involved. It's it's like a sort of a competition. So there's, we're going to have one where you can name a planet and that's going to go in the game um, and uh, create an event and that'll go in the game as well. So mm. um, yeah, c- come along, stay involved for the couple of weeks and uh, <laughs> involve yourself in... in you know, making the game happen. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for your time. It's It's been a pleasure, you know, going yeah. through this. And, you know, at some point, if you want to walk me through a game or play a game, you know, and if we're around, I'll be happy to to uh, yeah. you know, get my butt handed to me. So. <laughs> no that would be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. All right. Well, um, oh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, you too. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you both. You. I appreciate it.